Hey everybody, this is example number three for mechanics of materials covering column buckling. The problem statement that we have is the, the 14 feet wooden rectangular column is pinned at both ends. Assuming that yielding does not occur, find the critical buckling load and the modulus of elasticity that we're assuming for the wood is equal to 1600 KSI. Here's our wooden rectangular column. It has an unbraced length equal to 14 feet pinned at both ends and the cross section is shown here to the left. It's two inches by four inches, and the two inch uh, dimension we label as B, and the four inch dimension we label as H. And here's the X and Y axis for the local, the local axes for the cross section. First thing we're gonna do is calculate the section properties. And so first is a moment of inertia about the X axis, and it's equal to BH cubed over 12. And this comes out to be uh, 10.67 10.67 inches to the fourth power and this spreadsheet that I just showed you guys can access it on our website at engineeringexamples.net where we have this spreadsheet along with many other spreadsheets as well now we're going to calculate the moment of inertia about the y-axis it's equal to hb cubed over 12 and that's equal to 2.67 2.67 inches to the fourth power. And the effective length factor K for both axes is equal to 1.0 because it's pinned at both ends. And the unbraced length for both axes is equal to 14 feet because we don't have any, any intermediate bracing, so it's just the same for both axes. Now we're going to calculate the critical buckling load using the Euler buckling formula. It's equal to pi squared times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia divided by the effective length squared. The effective length is equal to k times l. Plug in the numbers pi squared times 1600 ksi times the moment of inertia. And here we're using uh, iy because this is the least moment of inertia. And divided by kl, effective length 1 times 14 feet. And then multiply by 12 inches to get it into inches squared. So the critical buckling load is equal to 1.49 kips. And in the spreadsheet, I calculated the critical buckling load about the x-axis and the critical buckling load about the y-axis. And then I just got the smaller one. And th that's one approach. But since we already know that the effective length, k times l, is equal for both axes, we don't even have to do that. We, just, we can just do how we did it in our calculations. But in, in the spreadsheet, I just calculated the critical buckling load about both axes. But in any case, the answer will be the same. It's going to be the governing load is a smaller value, and it's 1.49 kips. 1.49 kips. And this is the end of this example. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, like, and also please visit our website at engineeringexamples.net. Thanks.